today on Meet Up with Mac. We lived in Greenville. You, you okay. never, you've never been to Greenville. Oh, you come have on never now. been to Greenville. You're judging. I, no, this, this, this guy's some <laughs> city slicker that lives out here in the yeah, yeah. suburbs. Could uh, be, could be. I think the oddest thing about me and my story is the fact that I've never applied for a job. Uh -huh. Never, yeah. never. And later. When I was seven, my father abandoned me and my mom. I'm a fatherless child. Mm. Is there something you're afraid to admit yourself? You cannot feel personally responsible for those deaths. 252 people died, and that is inexcusable for anybody, for you or for me. And finally. You're not married, I can tell. No, I can tell this guy <laughs> has no idea. No, no. Peach tells a lot about a man. Yeah, I'm, 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 look, I'm confident in my manhood, and I, I'll tell you. Today I meet up with ABC 3340's chief meteorologist, the one, the only, James Spann. This guy, this guy's got to be the best 20-year-old interview I've ever had here. You're good. I mean, you should do this for a living. We'll have to cut that clip and put that somewhere. If you don't know my guest today, you need to know him. Uh, he is the one and only chief meteorologist for ABC 3340, James Spann. Glad, glad to have you here. Appreciate you being here. It's an honor to be on this program. <laughs> don't that, anybody like that voice? If you've not been told... Come on, man. I'm from Butler County, Alabama. I am from the middle of deep... South Alabama. I got nothing but South Alabama redneck in me. You, uh, you I, could introduce SNL on Saturday Night Live no, every weekend. No, 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 no. You no, could. No, no. He is an incredible man. I, I did not know much about you, James. Um, and this is the craziest thing. You came right on the show. You didn't know what you're getting into. No, I, I'm coming into a, a totally odd situation. But see, I like to live on the edge. I, I take chances in life. The, the only place to get the fruit is when you're out on the limb. Okay. So. Now, has that paid off for you? I guess so. Uh, again, to be successful, you have to learn risk, yeah. and you have to take chances, and you have to deal with risk. And sometimes you'll fail, but you know, after a while, you'll be successful. So I don't mind taking a chance. I'm, I've always had guts ever since I was a kid. I, I think the first time I got a triple dog dare, and we were in the woods of Butler. You've never been to Butler. You look like some city slicker. Uh, this, this, this guy looks like a total <laughs> city slicker. <laughs> I you, told you need to get out into rural parts of Alabama, where I'm from. I told you, you don't take it easy on me, and uh, I like that. No, no, sure. no. Uh, so I was probably five or six years old. We were out in the woods of Butler County. Okay. And some guy triple dog dared me to do something. Now, this is risk. This is taking a chance. He triple dog dared me to go to the bathroom on an electric fence. Oh, you're crazy. You know, I thought I was dead at the age of six. My body was, like, convulsing, and... Oh. Um, uh, these other guys were just dying laughing. So that was probably my first triple dog dare. Some work out and some don't. That one didn't work out very well. Okay, well, you must like attention then, huh? And I bet you've never done that before, and if you have not, I would not advise you to do it. I'm going to take a note of that, and I won't be going to the bathroom on an electric fence anytime you soon. So you learn a lot on this show. I mean, this hey, you've already got a, a nugget of wisdom here. That's it. You really don't know anything about me. We've never met. Normally, guests on the show have met with me. It's supposed to be behind the scenes of our private meetings, you know. So I could ask you some questions. You could ask me some. But I'm not going to do that because you're here to ask me questions. Well, whether you know it or not, we have a long history. And I will show this and we'll put it in the... But take a look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, these are my people. <laughs> so you are a knucklehead in this group. Huh? That one right there. That wow. knucklehead right below the S. See? I mean, uh, I, can, I can pick out that bonehead, you know... <laughs> No, these are my people. That that's cool. This Inverness Elementary, right? That's Inverness. I think that might wow. have been intermediate school there, fourth or okay. fifth grade. But we have a long history. I'll never forget. That's the first day that I learned to respect the polygon. Wow, <laughs> that's kind of awesome. You know, that's cool. You know, some. What's really scary, some people a lot older than you will come up and say, hey, man, I remember when you yeah. talked in my first grade class, and they're like 40 years old. I'm thinking, wow, maybe, yeah. maybe it's time to retire. So no, no, no. That's no. awesome. Whether you know it or not, you're, you're very well known, uh, unbelievably uh, credited with awards. You won an Emmy. 
Uh, is that right? You read the bio, didn't you? I read the Wikipedia. See, I don't even, I don't even write those things. I, you know, I, I have no idea. I don't know who write, wrote the Wikipedia entry. Yeah. I don't know who writes the station stuff, but, uh, you know, most of that stuff doesn't mean anything. I mean, I, I've, I've been blessed to win some awards, and, and what I tell people, I am not really good at what I do. You're probably good at what you do. I'm really not. I, I am not. But here's what I will do. I will work harder than you or anybody else to accomplish a task put before me. And I think that, that started really young in life. Uh, when I was seven, my father abandoned me and my mom. I'm a fatherless child. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no brothers and no sisters. You probably really? got some big family. You're an right? only child. Yes. Wow. So all of a sudden, my family was me and my mom. Right. And, uh, and I became the man of the house at the age of seven. Yeah. And, you know, you, you learn hard work. Yeah, that's tough. I learned hard work at yeah. a very young age. Yeah. And while that whole situation was just not good, some good things came out of it. And one of the things, it's a work ethic. And the only reason I've been successful at anything I've done, it's hard work. Yeah. There's no shortcut. There's no substitute. To be successful, you have to work hard. It involves a sacrifice. It involves long hours. And I've tried to apply that to my grown-up life. Yeah. And it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, you wouldn't... Would you have had it any other way? I don't know. See, you know... What happened when he left, uh, and we lived in Greenville. You, you okay. never, you've never been to Greenville. Oh, you come have on never now. been to Greenville. You're judging. I, no, Did this, this guy, some <laughs> city slicker that lives out here in the yeah, yeah. suburbs. Could uh, be, could be. You go through Greenville on the way to Gulf Shores, okay. right? and you stop and you eat at the Bates House of Turkey. That's the only thing that people know about Greenville. <laughs> okay. And by the way, if you ever get a speeding ticket, call me because my best friend from first grade is the mayor. You're the mayor. I can get know. you out of a ticket now. Please. But uh, if, if my father, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, the, the same thing, maybe not. But we, what happened? We moved to Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. My mom needed one more year of college because she had to get a job. I mean, my father never paid one cent really? of yeah. child support. Was it total disconnection at seven? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see him until I was 37. So, okay, okay. Um, I think maybe I had to experience that. And this is another good thing maybe that came out of something bad, although I... I I miss my childhood. Sure. I miss growing up in Greenville with those, yeah. you know, bonehead friends <laughs> yeah. uh, that I still see around uh -huh. and, and that are now mayors and things like that. But yeah. uh, I think I had to experience all of that to lay the groundwork for what I've done professionally over all the years. Yeah. Work ethic. Is that the number one skill that you attribute your success to? Just out yeah, working? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, yeah, you have to have the academics. You, you have to have experience. You have to have analytical thinking. Yeah. You have to have a communication skill. You have to be able to deal with people effectively because I'm in the people business. There's so many little elements that come together. But when I was young in this business, I had to worry about two things, doing the weather on television at 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Uh -huh. I don't know what I did with my time back yeah, then. Yeah. Now we are in this world that doesn't turn off. Yes, it, right. it, I am like a pinball in a pinball machine. Yeah. And if you don't have that work ethic, it will eat yeah. you alive. Yeah. And you won't be able to compete and, and, and yeah. you will just have at some point fade away and just go do something else. Yeah. I, I've noticed when I was looking, one of the things I learned about you is that one, you're a tough guy. Tough. Tough. I think that comes from your childhood. You're really tough. Two, and, and really it reminds me, and we're going to talk about the social media stuff because it's incredibly important. Uh, when you retaliate against the haters, you're tough. And, well, and, but then we're going to talk about that. Don't get into it yet. <laughs> but it is super vital and important. And I want to have a discussion about that later. But you're tough. So that's one. Second thing was your work ethic. I think there's a pattern because among, and you have so many entrepreneurial tendencies, which is odd because you're employed. And you know, and you can't consider an entrepreneur somebody an entrepreneur if they're employed. But working you, for the man. You're working for I'm the man. I'm working for the Jim. man. But but you are the man, and and you have kind of carved out this niche, and 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 you are an icon. And, and I mean, well, you are. Oh, come on, man. But but you have so many entrepreneurial tendencies. It's like you're an entrepreneur, 
before you are a meteorologist. Would you well, kind of relate the two? Yeah, I mean, in my bit, this business is changing like a meteor streaking through the night. Always, huh? All the time. Yeah. It always has and it always will. And you have to have that entrepreneurial skill because often the big boys, the man, yeah. they're not capable of moving fast enough yeah. to keep up with where they need to be. I've always had my finger in little side businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a partner in two LLCs. One is called the Weather Factory. Okay. We used to be the Weather Company and we sold the name. Ah, okay. To Good business. IBM, okay. and now the weather, if you look at the Weather Channel and all their entities, their parent is the weather company. They, they bought our You're name. You're kidding. And, and we look, for what we do, we could be the polka dot weather company. We don't care. <laughs> we, we bought a $9 domain name, and that's what we, we're the weather factory. We, right. we, we found the weather factory. We don't care. And I'm in a, a partner in an LLC called Big Brains Media, which is um, this stuff. Uh -huh, you know, sure. the weather Brains, our, our, our weather show is in that entity. Okay plus some other shows, uh, Matt and Matt, and uh, wow. uh, Mark Phillips doing the A-Side, which is an amazing show. It's a, I'll promote yeah. my pr shows oh, on your well, show. Hey. And I'm afraid a lot of these musicians are dying off, and we won't hear their stories. So he's doing a show called The A-Side oh, with the stories of these musicians. Yeah. But anyway, that's the other one. Sure. Uh, so I just like to keep my finger involved in the entrepreneurial side because yeah. it's fun, it's creative, it yeah. keeps your brain thinking. And yeah. When did you realize that you kind of... I mean, just from an early age, I just wonder how much was DNA and how much was I'm some I'm some knucklehead like you, you know. I mean, you, you just you just are always thinking about. And again, understand, I was the survivor. When, yeah. when, when I was young, we were trying to survive. Yeah, sure. And most people don't come from that background. Most people that are watching this have no idea what it's like to be yeah. broke. Yeah. And, and you were. And hurt. Uh -huh. And not have anywhere to go and not know anybody. and. Yeah. You learn how to be a survival guy, and, and being a survivalist, you just come up with creative ways to do things, to generate income, and to you know make a living. And, and you know, I so you chose to that up. that side is always with me. And, and I'd like to, and again, I'd like to hand some of this off down to our. We have two boys, and here you can have all this stuff sure. when I'm gone. I'll be at Elmwood here soon. And they can have <laughs> You're giving me a break. Come on. <laughs> You're totally self-made. You weren't handed anything. You came from the bottom up, and that's something that a lot of people don't know. I mean, I was told just in passing, telling people, hey, "I've got James Spann come on the show." They said, "Wow, he's got a great story," and I said, "Really? <laughs> you know, because I've watched you for years on television." And you just wonder. I mean, you wonder about the mailman that delivers. The no, mail. you're right. You know, and, and, and everybody has a story. You've got a story. Sure. And I could turn around and interview you, and sure. I could ask some really good questions. Sure, I appreciate it. But uh, no, everybody's got a story, and it's always interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the oddest thing about me and my story is the fact that I've never applied for a job. Uh -huh. never, never, never. Not one time. I don't. I've never filled out a job application. I, I've That's not a had it. And I also read you know, no no formal education in meteorology. Right. Is that when right? I started. My first job in the media was in high school. Uh -huh. I was hired by a radio station. Okay. And uh, I worked there for five years making minimum wage. And, of course, I'd start college during that time. And my first major was electrical engineering. Okay. Because my hobby was ham radio. And uh -huh. I loved tearing equipment down and building it. And it, it made sense. Yeah. I love weather. I love weather with a passion, but nobody, nobody ever told me this was a viable career option. Yeah. And um, at the radio station, after five years, I got a call from the local TV station, which was really, and this is Tuscaloosa. This is Tuscaloosa, right, right. Uh, at the time, Channel 33 was the local CBS station there, which okay. is part of the station I work for now, 3340. But that? at the time, it was in Tuscaloosa, and they, they said, would you be willing to come out and do some weather? Because during those horrible events in the 70s, yeah. the super outbreak of 1974, yeah. the Smithfield tornado, 77, the mm. Tuscaloosa tornado, all, all, I, I could name yeah, these sure. off for a long time, sure. but I did a lot of weather on the radio. Uh -huh. and, and, and by that, I mean, I was just reading tornado warnings and passing along information. That's all I was doing. Mm -hmm. But they liked it, and they said, would you be willing to come out and try that? And I came out, and all of a sudden, they were paying me $2.25 an hour to talk about weather on TV. And I'm thinking, <laughs> wow. And of course, you do other things. I was yeah. doing, you know, you do everything in a small station, but I'm thinking, man, uh -huh. 
So I got a call from the NBC channel in Montgomery, which at the time was really the best operation in the state, and maybe still is today. It's Channel 12, WSFA. And they gave me a chance to come down there after three months. And, I, and all these places, I never applied for this. They yeah. just call me up and say, here, start tomorrow. Yeah. Why but, do you think that was? But uh, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's, I'm a Christian, and, and I have a Christian worldview, and uh-huh. I think it's a uh, God thing, God if you will. Sure. Well, did you skip over Dallas? Dallas was an incredible... But thir- I was at 13 here, okay. and they transferred me to Dallas. You were know. like some yeah, they, Dallas out there, out there, they, they don't do Emmys in Dallas. They do Katie's. Why? I don't know. Okay. But, but you won a Katie. Yeah. Which, and I was like, tw- you were about, the youngest? I was about your age You were 23. Like yeah. And I think everybody needs to leave home. It, it was a hard Was move. that good? It, it, it was tough? It was very hard because I went home. They, they, they called me in the office on a Friday uh-huh. to tell me that they're transferring me. Uh-huh. And usually when they call you in the office and TV, you're about to be fired. I'm yeah. thinking, oh, Lord, you know, it's Friday. They're calling me into the office. I'm done. And I'd been there five years. Okay. But they said, we wanted to promote you, and you're, we're moving you to the biggest station in the chain, and you start Monday. And oh, I'm thinking, my, oh. Wow. Okay. And I'd go home and tell my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you're not married, I can tell. No, I can tell this guy <laughs> has no idea. No, no. Years that, for that. <laughs> that we were moving and we'd start Monday, and, and she was all, we were also expecting our first child. Okay. That kicked her into labor, and the boy was born the next day. Our oh, son was born okay. the next day. So in one weekend, You're kidding me. I had this new, our firstborn son, a new job, a new place to live. That was the weekend I pulled out all my hair. Yeah. I used to be a good-looking guy. <laughs> you didn't lose it. It was pulled out, yeah. yeah. Um, but then, anyway, so I was in Dallas for, uh, for a time. And, you know, everybody needs to leave home. Yeah. I am a, and I am a homeboy. I was born here. Yeah. I will die here. Yeah. I will be buried here. Yeah. But I do think we all need to leave home. Anyway, I was there for a couple of years, and, yeah. and the opportunity came up to come home, and we wanted to come home. Yeah, sure. um, and you moved back where? Came back to Channel 6. Okay, okay. Mike Royer had left 6 to go to 13. Okay. So 6 had their main weather mm-hmm. job open, mm-hmm. and uh, we cut a deal real quick, and... Uh, uh, I was at six for seven years, and then in 1996, the ABC channel formed, and I've been at ABC 3340 for 20 years. How in the world have you put up with your co-anchor, Dave Baird? That, cran- <laughs> that, that cranky old guy, this guy, he falls asleep during the weather. He drools all over himself. He doesn't know where he is half the time. I mean, it's just like, the, the, you know, the, the man's too old. We all uh, know Dave Baird. We love Dave Baird. You worked in high school at the same radio station together. Is yeah, that we, right? We've been working together 40. This act goes back to 1973. Like you're in the circus. Give me a break. He worked at the same radio station I did, and he was our mentor. Dave is about five years older than I am. Okay. Six years older than I am. Okay. And, uh, he worked mornings, and you know, in radio, that's the big deal. That's, that's prime it. time, that man. When it. you're doing morning drive, and Dave was the morning guy. He was, it. He was funny. Dave's got these big pipes, no, and yeah. everybody wanted to be like Dave. Sure. And I worked afternoons toward okay. the end, uh-huh. and so we were like, you know, the two bookends at the radio station. And here we are, it's crazy. you know, forty-five years later, still bookends at the TV station. Yeah. Which is, if you would tell us that one day we would be this age, still doing this stuff, we'd say you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, so he, he's a very good friend, and we have a lot of laughs together, and I, I hope he doesn't retire anytime soon yeah. because most of these TV anchors, you know, they come in there like Ron Burgundy, you know, they're all saying, <laughs> good evening. <laughs> well, he comes in there like I do, and we, we, yeah, we take our job seriously, but we don't take it too seriously. Yeah. We, we, sometimes you have to laugh in this business. If, it, if you don't, it will eat you up. Yeah. By the way, I like the product branding oh, we have here. Yeah. This segment brought to you by Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Recently, brand new sponsor. I knew it. You're probably making 300 grand a year just off this one uh, placement here. Yeah, and we've got a tie company, let alone it. Yeah, but well, not this, you, you don't want to get this tie here. This is nasty. So you got into meteorology. I read something about a first grade teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you read that? Wow. No, my first grade teacher was... Uh, first of all, tell us, what were you like as a child? Were you random? I was a knucklehead like you. So you were outgoing, you were... No, no, I... Well... Were you in a troublemaker? But, but before my father left, I was very outgoing. Okay. And I was a knucklehead. Uh-huh. After that, I became very much introverted because I didn't trust anybody. Uh-huh. I sure wouldn't trust you I because I don't you. know who you are. Yeah. And it took a long time to come out of that. Yeah. And really and truly, I'm still fairly quiet. If you get me... Yeah. 
you know, in, in a setting where I'm not with these cameras around. I'm, I, I'm a man of few words. That is so interesting. Um, I cherish those days in Greenville. We, yeah. we, and I know you're a video game guy. Nothing personal, yeah. but we didn't have video games. Sure. We played in the woods. And I'll, I will yeah. challenge you all day that we had a whole lot more fun than you had <laughs> sitting in front of that screen playing you know, doom all day or something. I would believe you. Oh, that first grade teacher was mean as a snake. She was 100 years old. She, she looked like she was 100. Yeah. <laughs> she, she had more upper body strength than an Alabama football linebacker. Yeah, yeah, sure. And sure. She, she called us by her last names. I, had, I never knew my friend's name, my friend's first, first name yeah. in the second grade. Uh -huh. I was just spam. That's funny. And uh, Tough lady. Gosh. <laughs> You don't even know. I mean, you, you pansies down here at Inverness, man. <laughs> if, 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 if you get in trouble down there, this is W.O. Palmer Elementary School in Greenville. You get in trouble, they will Ooh. wear your backside out so fast. You, you, you couldn't sit down you for learned. two days. And those old women were strong. <laughs> I would want them on my baseball team. Oh, I'd, bat them in the, I'd bat them in the four holes so they could hit the long ball. But um, I, I'd always be, you know staring out the window because I love weather and you know the story and, yeah. but she got so fed up one day and I wouldn't I wouldn't be listening I didn't even know what she was talking about sure. she said span get out of here <laughs> now and I'm thinking <laughs> my oh, life man, is was, over uh, -oh. uh but you know when I got out there she smiled at me and I had never yeah. seen that woman smile uh -huh. never uh -huh. And she gave me a book from the library about weather. And, and that, that book started me on the journey I'm yeah. still on today. So her name was Edna Earl Porterfield. And I'll always that? be thankful for her. That was one of those moments in life. It was a life-changing moment. Yeah. It was yeah. life-changing. And yeah. you never know when those days happen in your life. And you yeah. really don't know until years later. She recognized the unique interest every child in there had. Every child's different. And you have to understand that. And she gave me the freedom to be me. And that's what my mom did. She gave me the freedom to be me because I'm weird. Yeah. I mean, you know, most people <laughs> don't like weather. I mean, we're, we're just different. So, yeah, she was pretty cool. April Tornadoes, 2011. You're on TV. And I want to ask you about specifically your emotions during a time like that because there's tragedy. And you're on live television. And people look at you as a leader. And if you don't hold it together... You know, if you don't create the perception that things are okay, we're gonna we're gonna rebuild from this, then you know things could be chaotic. And so you you have a lot of responsibility during a time like April two thousand eleven. Tell me about that. What it felt like. Well, when it comes to emotion, we don't. Have, I don't have time. I mean, I. So you are totally I, I, in I, control. Of, I mean, I am a. The, the information coming in now yeah. is so intense, and you are so focused on all these screens and all these chat sessions with the weather service and and the social media feeds, and the pictures coming in, and the videos coming in. You, you don't have time to get emotional. You don't have time to get hung up in the moment. It's like, I, I'm a big fan of uh, the men and women that worked for NASA in the 60s that got manned to the moon. Uh -huh. If you listen to Gene Kranz, who was the flight controller uh, on that first yeah. lunar walk mission, yeah. he'll tell you, we didn't have time. Great to, we, we, we missed the moment. Yeah. We missed the moment. We were so busy. Yeah. And he says, I wish we could go back and relive that yeah. and just have time to enjoy the history that we helped to yeah. create. Yeah. And, and on that day, I, you wouldn't believe the traffic coming in. And so I don't have time to get hung up in the emotion, but yeah. the, the bottom line is on that day, I think for us in the weather enterprise, it was our finest day and it was our worst day. Mm -hmm. um, the physical science couldn't have been better. We had 62 tornadoes, and there was an excellent warning for all of them. Uh -huh. In some cases, you had 45 minutes yeah. to do something. It's incredible. But 252 people died, and that is inexcusable for anybody, yeah. for you or for me. Yeah. These were precious people that died. Before I die, I want to memorize every name mm -hmm. of those that died. And if you learn their stories and learn about their families, you'll understand the pain that we will feel now and we will always feel about the loss of life that day. And what we learned is that I'm just not as good as I think I am. And the bottom line is, in addition to understanding physical science, we have to understand social science. And that's our weakness. I've never taken a class in social science, uh -huh. human behavior. Now why is that? Just to get... With meteorology, you don't do that. You, you, you're doing... You know, differential equations, sure. you're doing thermodynamics, you're doing all these things, uh -huh. but you're not learning how to maybe communicate this uh -huh. to people and how to force them to take action. Okay. But on the communication end, we've learned some things that are shocking. If I were to give you a blank 
Matt with the counties of Alabama, yeah, could yeah. you put a red dot where you live? I could, but I bet... Well, you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, but I know what you're saying. People don't know where... The, the early data coming back suggests it's going to be close to 85%. Eighty-five percent cannot wow. find their home on a map. Yeah. The number of people that don't even know the name of the county where they live, it's going to be one in four. All these years we have used maps and people can't read them. Geography literacy is a problem in this country. Wow. And even people, you, you brilliant guys, you gamer guys, sure. you 20-year-old you, you <laughs> gamer guys, uh -huh. And again, I'm not talking about you specifically, sure, but, but sure. your generation, yeah. you use the Maps app uh -huh. on your yeah. phone, where it, which where is great. It pulls your, auto, your right. location automatically. Right. But it uh -huh. pulls the GPS data, and you just tell it where you're going, and it tells you where to go. That's you right. don't even look at the map. Yeah. We now have a new generation, and my generation too, yeah. can't read maps. Sure. we got to change. Yeah. Here's how I do my research. Yeah, I go to Dollar General, uh -huh. and I bet you've never been to a Dollar General. Oh, come on. Some slick guy here like we this are. guy. We're judging again uh, over there. That's what I do. <laughs> I, I, I like to mock people. Come on. When's the last time you've been in a dollar gym? Oh, in the last year. Oh, on, but he's making that up. <laughs> but you, you go into the real world where people really are. Yeah. Walmarts, okay. Targets. I'll, I'll hand him a map. Can you put a red dot where you live? Okay. I, I want to know, if I say this, do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. and this is not questioning anybody's intelligence. Sure. It's questioning our ability to communicate. Sure, yeah. It's not anybody's fault, but our fault. Yeah. I figure I work about eight more years. And during those eight years, I want to help fix this warning mm -hmm. mess because I'm learning more about those that died. And so many people have died on my watch. So many. It will break your heart. And if it doesn't, you're not human. Uh, and I look at the grieving loved ones left behind, mm -hmm. and I see the pain in their eyes. Every time I go on television, I see the pain in their eyes. That's what I see. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm driven to do. You cannot feel personally responsible for those deaths. No, I'm not. And I don't play that game. That's, I tell these young kids that work that day, don't you dare play mental yeah. gymnastics. Right. It, is, it is mental you, gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. You, we all did the best we could do. Yeah. We all the number did the of best lives we could do. you saved. It, Incredible. That day, with our understanding, we did the best we could do. There's sure. no book. There's no yeah. manual. Yeah. And, the, and the other problem, you know, there were times on that day where you'd have multiple strong, violent tornadoes yeah. down at the same time. Yeah. Which one do you focus on? Yeah, right, right. How do you parse? Do you show video of one and audio of the? How yeah. do you handle that? Yeah. The, you, yeah, so we much. did it on the fly. Yeah. And history will judge that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all on YouTube for the world to see. You can watch all of that. We, we want it out there for the world to see. But let's take that and use it as a positive mm -hmm. to fix it for the next time it happens. And that's where we are now. You've been in the weather business pre-internet and now current today's internet. Which do you prefer? Obviously, social media is a huge part of your business now. I see you responding. I mean, you're very diligent with responding to people's specific questions. I mean, there's not been a time where I have not I've tweeted you and you've not responded. And you have so much traffic coming in. You are so diligent. And I think that's because you realize the importance of it. Uh, did you organically, I mean, did you, was it strategy that you grew your social media? My, my Facebook reach in the last seven days is uh, just under 10 million. There you go. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Now, was that a strategic effort? I mean, obviously, you had to learn these systems, which for a lot of folks, they don't know how to use. A bunch of old people like me typically don't get it. You know uh, it better than anybody. But And let me just say this about the answering questions. If you come to me with a question, I am honored. Think of all the weather people in the world and all the weather people just in this market where you could ask a question. You choose to ask me that question instead of considering that an inconvenience. I consider that an honor. Well, and it's my, it's my job to answer that. But... The, Part of the social media thing is just being an early adopter. Mm -hmm. um, I get on things early, mm -hmm. uh, and I got a ham radio license when I was 14. Yeah. That, was the, that was the social media sure. of my day, and that's a very important cause, hobby today because one oh, day incredible. when that EMP happens, yeah. Yeah. we're it. Yeah. When your internet goes down, you're all looking, of a sudden, we're it. You're looking for a ham radio. So, so you know, I'm still very active in that, but with the social media stuff, I immediately saw the, the yeah. possibilities you did. if this can be adopted by a lot of people. Uh -huh. And, you know, most of the platforms you sign up for, they, they don't work. But yeah. some are going to work, you know. 
And so I was early, early in the game. On so you had a vision things. for it. You saw it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It's like, like you want to give me an email address. My, my, my address is jspan at gmail.com. It's like tcook at apple.com. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. think he works for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who has the, <laughs> jspan at google.com? Yeah. Because I was an early adopter. Yeah. I, I, got a, I saw what they were doing, yeah. and I thought it was fantastic. And you just sign up for these accounts early. Sure. There are so many new platforms. I'll be signing up for it, and mo great. most of it just goes away in a few yeah. months. But w when it comes to, to Facebook and Twitter, the, the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, mm -hmm. those are the really the ones we use to reach people. Uh, it's engagement. Yeah. It's pushing good content. It's not spamming people, right. asking them to do something or yeah. watch. Hey, watch me on the news tonight yeah, at yeah, 10 yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm Brick Tamlin and I'm good. <laughs> Come on. You're creating value is what you're saying. I know. Listen, if you don't want to stay up and watch the late news, yes. so what? I'm here to give you information now. And if you don't provide that information when people need it, mm -hmm. they're going to go find somebody else that will. Mm -hmm. And so Very I, I'm not there to just push people to these legacy TV products. I mean, I'm there to give them what they need now. Mm -hmm. We, 18, 24-year-olds. Their life is precious. Yeah. It's you. Yeah, sure. That's you. I'm looking at you. Yeah. You don't watch the news. Come on, man. It, the, the, the late news, it's still basically Ron Burgundy from the mm -hmm. 70s. You know, good evening. Here's <laughs> Dave comes on the air. You're not going to watch that. Right. So I reach most people your age by Snapchat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, by pushing out stories with weather information. And quite frankly, with that platform, some... Some old guys say, well, it disappears. Well, good. I don't want them getting old weather information. I don't want them getting a tornado warning from two days ago. What a great platform. So you know the information is going to be fresh. And every, I say every. Most 18 to 24-year-olds yeah. are there. Sure. And you have to engage them on days when the weather's not bad with goofy. Like I was at UAB basketball game. Yeah. Man, I got upgraded somehow to courtside. Man, this is awesome, man. <laughs> so you put stories that are kind of goofy but yet yeah. something that they, they might watch. And, the Periscope stuff we do with Song of the Night every night. Uh, we have about 1,200 loyal families. It's a family. Uh -huh. These people would never watch the news. But when they need us, yeah. they know who we are. Mm -hmm. They know how to find us. And what I'm doing, it's laying down this loyal group of audience. So when we do have tornadoes and we do need to reach them, I know where they are and I can reach them. Yeah. Well, also the content of storm damage and videos and on-the-ground storm chasing and spotting. I mean, it really brings things into real time. Oh yeah, and, and, the, de and, and the, the images and the video we get coming in, yeah. it's ch it is a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 20 years ago, I couldn't buy right. a report from rural Sumter County, Alabama. Now, if I need a picture of a, yeah. the, of a right rear flank of a severe storm at Cuba, Alabama, yeah. I'll have five just like that if I ask for it. Yeah. But the other thing too, on the outbound side, uh, Facebook Live is a game changer. Mm -hmm. We had a tornado event last week. I don't know when this show's going to be posted, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it was back in uh, December. And uh, I want to say the, the TV station streams our coverage live on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And that's how most people are starting to watch now. It's incredible. They don't go to the station app. They, they don't go to the web. They, they go to the Facebook app on their are phone. Are those numbers growing? Oh, yeah. I, the number of views on that live stream, it was approaching a million. Unbelievable. And, wow. and not... not you know, who knows how long they watched or yeah, where sure. they are, but, but that's a very important way of pushing it out, and we understand yeah. that. So it, I'm a big fan of social media, mm -hmm. and it's made it a two-way thing. Yeah. Well, you were one of the first adopters of live streaming. I mean, I remember you and on, on Ustream, yeah. and you had the Span 24-7 channel. Yeah, Ustream is how we reached a lot of people April 27, yeah. because uh, I recall. A, lot of, a lot of students your age back then yeah. were in their dorm room in a basement yeah. or in a safe place or their apartment on the lowest floor, sure. and they were watching that on their phone, and wow. Oh, yeah. I want to say Ustream served over 50,000 concurrent streams that day, and for that yeah. era, Incredible. that was big. Incredible. Tell me about, and then I want to get into some quick personal, and then I'm going to let you go because I want to keep it. We're going to have to do this again. This i got to go see my mom. We can talk forever. Yeah. Uh, Snowmageddon in 2014? 14. 14. Dubbed Snowmageddon. That's the name now. What are your thoughts about that day? Oh, we were, look, that was the second worst forecasting mistake of my career, and I've been doing this 38 years. You cannot take that as a forecasting mistake. No, it was a disaster. The, 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 I mean, the forecast itself wasn't that bad. The right. impact is all that matters. Sure, that's what it was. And that's where we screwed up. Yeah. We said on the air we didn't expect travel problems. Uh, we expected 
no high impact event here. We wow. thought it would be south of here. But what happened, it, and it, we, now we know, yeah. so we can hand this knowledge down to the next generation, but it was 20 degrees Fahrenheit when uh -huh. it was snowing. Uh -huh. We expected a little bit of snow, and that's what we had, a little bit of snow. Yeah. I mean, it came in right on time. It sure did. But the ice accretion process on roads, it is radically different at 20 Fahrenheit. And what happened, the snow as it came down, we had a bit of melting, and then we had a flash freeze. Mm -hmm. I have no experience with a flash freeze. Well, guess what? Now I do. Uh -huh. But you put down a base of ice like a crippling ice storm. Yeah. And people started spinning out, and, and everybody just panicked. And they yeah. tried to leave all at once, yeah. and you saw it happen Chaos, with that. Yeah. But uh, that's just an example that we've got a long way to go. And I was going to Tuscaloosa to speak to a school, like I always sure. do. And again, thanks to social media, I stopped at the rest stop near Mercedes at Brookwood. Uh -huh. And I looked at all these pictures, and I, I didn't have time to think. I had uh -huh. to react. Yeah, yeah. And in my business, that's true a lot of times. So I knew I had to get back. You got back immediately. And so I turned around, and by the time I got off on 150 in Hoover, I was fishtailing. And I, mean, I said, oh, goodness. Wow. And, and it was horrible. I mean, I was losing control. Wow. I, did, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I got down to River Chase Parkway and US 31 where I got into the gridlock. Mm -hmm. And that's where I ditched the car and just walked. You did. And thank the Lord, I just walked a mile, yeah. which is nothing. Yeah. Some people walk 10, 15 right. miles. Uh -huh. So walking a mile, but you know, that was the longest mile because, <laughs> you know, and I, of course now with social media, I'm answering questions and trying to, but what we had to do with that was to change people's mindset. Yeah. The mindset initially, I've got to go pick up my child yeah, sure. and go home. The mindset had to change. Yeah. No, if you're in a warm place with food, you stay. You stay yeah. If your kid's at school, the teachers will not leave them. Yeah. The teachers are heroes, mm -hmm. and they didn't leave them. They, they had fun. They were fed. Yeah. But, but it's, it's the parents' instinctive reaction to go pick up your kids, and you yeah. can't do that. Yeah. So 82 was the worst ever, it but was. 2014 ranked number two. Pretty bad, huh? Yeah, bad. All right, out of all the weather events in your career, what's the most significant? What's the first one that comes to mind? April 27, 2011. 2011. Right. That was an analog event. Th yeah. Those things happen every 40 years. Uh -huh. and, and I worked April 27th professionally, yeah. and so that would be the yeah. sentinel number one high-impact event. Mm -hmm. I'd say the blizzard of 1993 was probably number two, okay. and this was before your time. I heard a lot about that. Uh, we had, where we sit right now, we had two feet. That's Here, not two kidding. inches, that's two feet of snow. That had to rank as uh, number two, and I'd say Hurricane Frederick might be number three. That was a hurricane that came right up Mobile Bay. Okay. The, the amazing thing about Alabama, you get such a variety of weather. Yeah. I mean, it is a smorgasbord, mm -hmm. which makes it so interesting, and it's a great job. <laughs> All right, rapid fire questions. We're going to end quick. Cats or dogs? Cats, man. We have three cats that live at the TV station. At the TV station? We have two black females and oh. one gray male cat. We've oh. had them for about three years. Uh, somebody probably just dumped the black cats off. They're like yeah. little twins. And wow. that male gray cat just showed up, and he was near death. And uh -huh. we, we got him a little house outside, oh. and we feed him, and we've had them, you know, fi right. fixed. Yeah, yeah. And they've just become station pets, and we have no... Snakes, we have no yeah. mice, we have no problem. They're like barn cats, they're uh, great. This is an easy question because I know you, Mac, uh, Windows or Mac? Uh, Mac. Mm. I, I lost a video project I've been working on for days in 2006. Mm. Par, and I, and it, look, <laughs> I, I don't like, it's almost like politics. Raw but, and uncut here. I, I, I went into, I bought a MacBook Pro in 2006, okay. which was, um, when I convert, it's been 10 years. So I've been a Mac guy for 10 years. And listen, I think the new Microsoft soft stuff is fantastic. Yeah. The Surface and everything, I think yeah. it's great. Yeah. Yeah. They seem to be innovating in a more rapid clip than Apple right now. Yeah. Apple's so focused on these stinking phones. I'm yeah. a Mac guy. Okay. Guys, if you all abandon the pro market, you're abandoning me. Yeah. And I don't know if they are or not, but there's a lot of buzz on the street about that, but I'm a Mac guy. Okay. Uh, if you met yourself today, um, would you be friends with me? You know, I'm drawn to opposites, Okay. so I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, that's why my wife and I, are. we've been married 35 years, and she's 
And again, really and truly, I'm a quiet guy, which makes no sense. I mean, I, you see the sass and you see all the social media <laughs> stuff. We have to do that to survive. You, man, I'm telling but you. But she's more outgoing, and we're the perfect mm -hmm. couple. But I, I don't know. So I, you might not be friends with you. Well, Pam Huff, when she first met me, uh, this was Pam Huff and I still work together. We've been working sure. together for all these years. I came to Birmingham TV, and she worked at Channel 13. I was her new weather guy. She didn't like me at first. Oh, uh, really? She thought I was some snob oh, boy. guy that thought he was special because I didn't say anything. Uh -huh. I, I was afraid of people. I didn't trust people. Mm -hmm. I just didn't say anything, and she thought I was a jerk. Yeah. But now, you know, we're best friends. We, we got over that real quick, yeah. but uh, I, I don't know. I'm just so different. It's, I'm hard to get to know. Yeah. Is there something you're afraid to admit to yourself? That I've done? You're just afraid to admit. A fear? Something that... <laughs> don't reveal your weaknesses, James. That's no, every, look... <laughs> I would say, you know, I don't reveal my weaknesses. Thanks. Let's oh, move on. Oh, please. My, my, middle, <laughs> my middle name is weakness. Um, I, I guess I, I, I'll say this. I had a bad habit going, and I, I work bad hours. I mean, I get home at midnight. I'm up before five. Uh -huh. I, don't, I haven't slept in a long time. How much sleep do you need? More than what I'm getting. I mean, <laughs> I, I do okay on the weekend, but I'm sleeping about, you know, four hours a night. Four hours, okay. That's bad. Yep, I mean, something yep. bad's going to happen on the back end of my no. life. But after that, uh, after I get home, you know, midnight, I'd have a bad habit of sucking down ice cream. Oh, boy. I would what's suck your, it down. The flavor? What's your flavor? Briar's homemade peach. Oh. It, and I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I got a problem with that. So I, I have, I have changed. I'm working out three oh, days a week. This, start, this started three it's months not worth ago. It. It's not I've, worth I've it. adjusted my diet. I've not had ice cream in three months. You're kidding. Uh, I've wow. lost about 10 pounds, and uh, I'm going to get stronger and better. But I, yeah, that's I, great. I want to have a great life when I'm in my 70s, yeah. and I don't want to be some old guy. You know, You're doing the prep, man. So, some of this stuff you can't control, but as, as far as I can, I want to be in good shape and sure. travel and enjoy the world and see some things. Mm -hmm. And So uh, the, the ice cream days are over. Okay. All right, I hear you. Peach tells a lot about a man. Yeah, I'm, 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 look, I'm confident in my manhood, man. I, I'll tell you. Yeah, I hear that. I, I used to like the Carpenters when I was a kid. Oh, okay. now, now, you don't even know who they are. Oh, but, I do know who they are. Here we go, judge it again, James. Men, now, come on. Men could not admit that they liked those songs. Merry Christmas, Darling, when that song would come, I loved that song. Yeah. But back when I was playing the radio, rock and roll music, I couldn't you admit that. Admit that that stuff's that. horrible. Who would listen to this? Let's play some Led Zeppelin, man. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I am now confident enough to say I, yeah. I like the Carpenters. All right, strange question. Last book you read. Um, what Stands in a Storm by Kim Cross. Interesting. Okay. You need to read that. And I listen to books. I don't you, Audible? read. Audible. Oh, I'm yeah. a big Audible.com yeah, guy. Saver, I, I listen. I, I, I'm traveling every day yeah. and I listen. I love the space program. Oh, I mean, yeah. Anything involving the yeah. Apollo program in the 60s, I like to listen to that. Uh, another one that I just absolutely love, One Shot at Forever, mm. which is a book about a high school baseball team in Illinois, Macon, Illinois. And back in those days, there were no cap classifications. This little bitty school made it to the state championship, okay. playing some big school from Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's a great read. I'm a, I, our son played high school baseball oh, okay. yeah, at, that uh, makes sense. at yeah. Spain Park, and I love baseball. Uh -huh. My joy when I was able to coach and I walking out on that baseball field mm -hmm. on a summer day where the sky is so blue. Uh, but that's a great, great read. So I, my, my books are written. You ought to see my Audible collection. Uh, You're going to think, great. this guy is weird, man. You, you talk about somebody. eclectic. It is the most bizarre <laughs> mix of books you'll ever see in there. Diversify. That's good. That's good. Uh, best advice you ever got? Avoid the guys on the street corner. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was moved to Tuscaloosa, there were some guys selling something called LSD. Oh, yeah. For a nickel, uh -huh. and they said it makes you feel good. Uh -huh. And for a kid that was hurting with no dad and didn't know anybody in a strange place, that was very appealing to me. Yeah. And of course, they did it to get you hooked, and then you go back and they jack up the prices and everything. But that was a hallucinogenic drug. Sure. It was very common in the '60s, and my mama said, "Avoid the guys on the street corner," and those were the drug dealers. And mm -hmm. um, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. We all have, but I haven't touched that stuff. And I've seen a lot of good scientists lose their career over addiction. And if anybody's watching this show with an addiction, get some help. Getting help is not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of strength. 
heroin, where we are right here, it's out of control. It's tearing my families apart. Mm -hmm. You take one hit, it must make you feel like a king or a queen. You mm -hmm. can't stop. Mm -hmm. it used to be crystal meth mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago. Now it's heroin. So, But avoiding the guys on the corner is probably very great. My mama told me that. Greatest advice I ever got. Mm -hmm. And last question, best advice you can give? Work hard. Mm -hmm. the, the, the three characteristics I teach, with, and I do some other things on the side I don't even talk about. I'm chairman of the board of a big hospital mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm called Grandview Medical Center. We have uh, about 2,300 FTEs, full-time employees down there. At the TV station, whatever I'm involved in, children's ministry, uh, I, I encourage people to have a passion for what they do. I want people to work with me that loves coming to work every day. And at my ripe old age, I cannot wait to walk in that door every day. And that's weird. Because most people gripe about their job. You should love it. Yeah. Follow your passion. Mm -hmm. You've been given the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't Try to impress anybody else. Don't be a phony. And if what you're doing now is not it, go find your passion. Mm -hmm. I don't want you in my... If you're whining and griping about your job, I don't want you in my building. Mm -hmm. That's a cancer. Mm -hmm. So number one's a passion. Number two's integrity. Doing the right thing when nobody's looking. That's a long story for another day. But those people are hard to find. And then having a servant's heart, looking after the needs of others before your own. Mm -hmm. I don't need no self-centered jerks. And I used to be one. I was like that when I was young. So... Uh, those are the three things. Have a passion for what you do, do it with integrity, and have a servant's heart, and you'll be successful. Well, James Spann, not a bad story for somebody that uh, was fatherless, single mom, broke. I'm blessed, man. I am the most blessed man in the whole world. I'm just, every day's a gift. I mean, you've come from nothing, and now you're an incredible success story, saving lives. This, guy, this guy's got to be the best 20-year-old interviewer I've ever had here. You're good. I mean, you should do this for a living. We'll have to cut that clip and put that somewhere, you know? No, it's like, look, I'm a horrible interview guy. You know what I do? Like, if I were interviewing you, I would ask a question. I would be so nervous about the next question I'm going to ask. Give me a my, I, I'm not even listening to what you're saying. You so I, I got to come back with some boneheaded question. Well, I just answered that. You so, give me a break. No, 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 no. I don't do these things. I, I'm horrible. I don't do interview. You, you were good. I, well, it worked. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. I joy to be here. James Spann, everyone. At Spann, follow you on social media. At Spann, yes. One of the most important people you can follow. James, hey, appreciate you my being pleasure. here. Okay. It's been McKinematics. Meet up with Max. Until next time, keep it all biz. <laughs>